Hello everybody, um, my name is Meggy. I'm a graphic novel illustrator, and this is a real-time drawing video. I have been wanting to make one of these for a very long time. Real life, real life drawing? What? Real-time drawing? This is great. I'm not gonna edit any of my mistakes out, so I'm just gonna go ahead and chat to you for a little bit, and if I say something stupid, you best believe that's staying in for good. Um, I've been wanting to make one of these videos for a very long time. Uh, one of my favorite things to watch, either on um, Instagram or YouTube, is when people come on and just draw. And you can draw with them, and it's really fun, because it feels like you have a little artist date, um, which is nice. Because for anybody who draws professionally, or anybody who doesn't have friends with the same interest it can be quite an like an isolating event uh to want to draw and spend these long stretches of time just doing this lonesome task that is artistry oh my god do i sound silly already great we're like what 30 seconds in um and so i i've always loved the way these videos made me feel it made me feel like like i was out there with a friend you know, just when we're both drawing or you're drawing and I'm doing something and I just wanted to pay that forward and make one myself. And while I was doing it, I'm not going to talk this whole video, by the way, I promise not to bother you with my gross voice too much. Um, but I also thought this might be a fun forum for me to answer some of your most asked questions. Um, for example, the last time that I posted a video, I had a lot of direct messages on Instagram that asked me all about um, the materials that I use, the brushes that um, I draw with, and I thought this would be uh, a great opportunity to talk about that. By the way, if you're hearing a rumbling sound next to my voice, I'm playing with the zipper of my hoodie. I promise it's not one very long fart. It is, in fact, a metallic zipper from a thrifted Primark sweater. So I just need you to know that for my own peace of mind. Thank you. This has been a PSA. Um, so starting off easy, the tablet that you're seeing me use is the Apple iPad Pro. It's, I believe, 12 and a half inches. I know there's a couple of sizes. I think it's there's obviously the um, iPad minis, which are small boys. I have one of those for travel purposes because they fit in your luggage a lot easy and they're very, very um, useful to carry in your carry-on bags. Um, then there's, I think, a nine inch. And so this is the biggest one, basically, is what I'm trying to say. It's the biggest one you can find because I like having a uh, drawing space. Um, one day I do want to buy a bigger tablet um, that is upwards of 20 inches, but I'll explain later in the video why that would be hard for me. <laughs> I'm kind of reliant on the iPad at the minute, but this, this boy right here has served me for many long years. Um, I think I first got this in 2018, so in iPad years, that's like 500, um, an elderly boy, but it's, served me very very well like i've pushed this um it's been at the bottom of my bag it's been at the bottom of my suitcase i've clinked it i've bonked it and it still works great there's even a crack on the screen just in the top right corner um this boy is golden like zero troubles so that is what i work on the software that you see me use in case you don't recognize it it's called procreate i believe it's a new zealand company um who are just magical wizards at what they do. This program has changed my entire drawing life. When I first started dabbling into digital art, it was 2018, I was just starting off. Like I had zero experience with drawing um, and I picked up the cheapest Wacom tablet I could find on Amazon, just like the most deeply discounted uh, little pad thing that I could see. And I tried a bunch of softwares when I was learning. Um, the first one being clip art. I think I started with clip art. My very first piece of digital artwork was done on clip art. Um, 
and then obviously <laughs> the big boys Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop which I found them to be so intimidating when I first started working on them. They're not the most user-friendly um, as far as experience goes. Like, they're just, which is, you know, they're built for professionals. They're built to do a very specific professional purpose. There's a reason that they're the industry standard. But they were just so intimidating. And I remember just watching hours and hours of YouTube videos with tutorials and lessons and trying different things and failing at them um, and eventually got to a point where I could do a full illustration that I really liked on Photoshop and it was this big heavy moment um, and then I found Procreate and Procreate here's the thing this is going to be a little fangirl moment because the amount of streamlining that Procreate has done for me in terms of work it makes things so convenient. It makes the little things so convenient, like moving your canvas around, zooming in and zooming out, changing brushes, changing sizes. Everything is just like perfectly made with the thought of an artist forward workspace in mind. Um, and it made creating so much faster and so much easier. And for the type of digital art that I personally create, it has all of the features that I need in order to be able to produce pieces that I'm in love with. And so when I started, when I dabbled with uh, Procreate for the first time, that was it. Like that, from that day on, I think I've opened Photoshop maybe like two or three times to draw on. I still use Photoshop to clean up my files before they go to print um, if I'm working on a professional project but I predominantly use Procreate for all of my work across the board. Professional, personal, hobby, um, it all goes on Procreate because it just, it's, it's the best of every single world for me. <laughs> it's fast, it's convenient, it has all the tools that I look for, um, and so I'm basically just in love with Procreate. Thank you, Procreate. Um, so that's softwares. Uh, as far as brushes, I think the brush question is the one that I get the most often. Which brushes do I use? Um, now, I don't... I think maybe twice in my life I've bought a brush pack um, from, like, a, like, an artist that I've admired on the internet and tried them out. And for some reason, for me, nothing quite beats the brushes that are native to Procreate. Right? And I'm going to put a little image of them on um, the screen right now so that you can see um, my selection of my everyday brushes. So I don't change... By the way, the settings stay exactly the same. Like, I'm using these brushes as I found them on the software. With the exception of the dry ink, which I will explain. So the brush that you will see me use in this video pretty much the entire way through... And the brush that I ink every single one of my illustrations with is the dry ink brush. Um, it has grit, it has texture, it's got brilliant pressure control, which is why you see the line sort of become heavier and um, slimmer as you draw. Uh, pressure control is something that I am thoroughly, thoroughly in love with, biggest fan on the planet. Um, because I love the look of different weights in the line as it progresses. And that's all due to pressure control on this brush. Um, the only adjustment that I make with the dry ink uh, brush is that I, due to an autoimmune condition, I have a tremor in my hands, which means that it's hard for me to draw straight lines or smooth lines. And something that Procreate does brilliantly is it has a stabilizing option. So if you go into, I think you just double click the brush to go into the options. But if you double click the brush and go into the options, you can click stabilization, which is I think on, in the second icon on the menu. I amp up my stabilization to 100, just the whole way. Um, and I keep it at that unless 
I intentionally want my lines to look shaky and look like a sketch. Um, but I, that's the only modification on any brush that I make. I amp up the streamline um, to a, sorry, I said stabilization. I meant, I meant streamline. I put the streamline to 100, stabilization stays at zero, because that does something funky that I don't know if I like. But the streamline is just amped as far as it'll go. Um, and that basically means that the line smooths itself out as you go along. I can't really explain it. Just go on Procreate and give it a try and see if you like it. If you have a tremor, good luck to you. This is a great option. It's helped my hands out so much. Um, so the dry ink is what I, um, of course, ink with. Sometimes, as you'll see me do the eyes on the fish, I wanted to demonstrate that I also use the 6B pencil. I sketch everything with a 6B pencil. Um, I love the way the 6B pencil looks. I love the texture. I love just everything about it makes me so happy. Like this eye, for example, that I'm doing on the fish, I don't know if I've synced the audio correctly, but um, that I'm doing with the 6B pencil because the texture and the thickness is different and it just gives your eye something a little bit different to look at. And I really enjoy that. Um, however, it just depends on my mood. It's not always that I use the 6B brush for eyes um, specifically or detailing specifically. Most of the time I do use the dry ink for that as well. But if you are looking for a more gritty look, the pencil is where it's at. Um, I also use uh, the airbrushes in all of their sizes. Um, so I think there's the fat brush, the medium brush, and the fine um, grain. Those guys I use for the coloring process, which I should rewind back for a second. I put color down with the studio brush, um, which is it's the most straightforward brush you'll ever find. Um, in your life. It's just, it literally just puts color down. It doesn't layer. There's no texture to it. It's a straightforward, just solid color. <laughs> and that's how I start all of my coloring processes with just solid um, backwash. And I use the studio brush to lay that down. If I then want to insert gradients into something like a source of light, a source of darkness, if I want to make sure that something has two or three colors, like a sweater that is blue, but I also want a little bit of purple, I will use the airbrush in order to create that gradient. And I just love the effect that it has, the texture that it has, it's gorgeous. Um, and then I also sometimes, this is a new development, sometimes I will use the Bonobo, is it chalk or is it pastel? I think it's the Bonobo chalk, which has this like, so the edges of the airbrush brushes, um, and this is the reason that I love them so much, they sort of do this like speckle effect um, where you can cast off almost like a flick of color as you're using them. The Bonobo Chalk does a very similar thing where it just inserts a little bit more noise in the color. It's, it's very speckly, <laughs> which... I love. Um, if you look at my art as of recent, um, and you look at people's faces, the gradient that I use for faces that goes on top of the nose, that is the bonobo chalk. That is the type of texture that I'm talking about. Um, I will eventually make a video where I also fully color something in real time, which, well, is it going to be real time? Because that would take... Um, you know, a good few hours. <laughs> I don't know if YouTube is going to love me for that video. Um, but I, I do want to make more videos just to show you how I use the color brushes as well. Um, but I did want to share them anyway. And again, I'm not, there's no modifications on the settings of those. I use them as they come and procreate. Um, and they just do me a fantastic job. Um, so I think that covers all of our stuff. The tablet is an iPad, like I said. Um, the software is Procreate. You buy it one time, there's no subscription model. You buy it one time and then you just use it as much as you want. And then the brushes are, for inking specifically, are um, the dry ink. 
I get asked that. <laughs> I get asked this question maybe five times a day. Like, what what brush do you ink with? And it's the dry ink brush. Um, so yeah, those are my tools of the trade, so to say. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I'm leaving out before I leave you with potentially some smooth jazz to enjoy the rest of this video. Um, I also do want to film something else and sort of do like a little drawing date like this. Um, and I'll ask questions, uh, for questions on Instagram so that people can tell me what they're wondering about and I can just like sit for a drawing date and talk to you and we can have fun and I can say stuff and some of it's gonna be stupid and I'm gonna burp occasionally um, and try to disguise it. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, anyway, I am doing a little bit of traveling around England in the next couple of days. Um, we're going to Bristol to get Jack tattooed. Uh, he's getting tattooed by one of my favorite artists ever. Uh, her name is Alice. Um, she did my stunning devil tattoo, devil on a stool, <laughs> which you might have seen on my left arm. Um, she's tattooing him as well. And then we're dipping down to London for um, an editorial meeting that I need to attend, which is very, very cool. And I'm going to film all of those adventures for the January vlog, which I'm really excited for. I've been thoroughly loving uh, making videos. Ooh, somebody else asked me about this, about the video stuff. Um, what software I use to edit things. Any type of video that you see on my page, um, reels, video posts, uh, YouTube stuff, all of that is edited in Final Cut Pro. Um, I've been using Final Cut Pro since pretty much uni, like a long, long time. So I'm just really familiar with it. Um, I hope. <laughs> um, so all of all of my adventures um, and drawing and life and haircuts and illustration, it's all going in the upcoming vlog. So yeah, I think that's it for me. I will let you enjoy the rest of this and the rest of your day. I hope you have an amazing time. Uh, sorry for talking your ear off. I hope this was helpful. Um, and yeah, have an amazing rest of your morning or lunchtime or day or night, wherever you are. And I will see you soon. Bye.